Hey everyone, Dan here. We are during Power Hour on Monday, June 7th. Today we're going to do an update video on Workhorse. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. And let's jump right in. So if you saw my video last week on Workhorse, you know we're looking at it as a strong short squeeze candidate, mostly because of the price strength that it has started to show and the high, high level of short interest that it's been receiving as a percentage of its available float. So here's the chart where we stand right now. This is the five day, five minute. You see we had this big run up here, peak a little over 18, and then you know there's been some selling off here. And I'm sure that this has been a combo of both um, some folks locking in profits, some folks kind of getting um, scared away, and the shorts still continuing to pile in and um, you know, essentially, I guess, do what shorts try to do, which is not only profit on a stock going down, but oftentimes trying to take that company to zero. And uh, I know that that's a big reason why folks really don't like what the shorts stand for. But if we take a look at the chart, um, you know, a couple of things jump out to me. One, we have some incredibly strong areas of price strength here. So, you know, we should have really, really strong support at that $13 level because of pre previous um, support and resistance. And then same thing at this $13.59, which is just below where we are now. Um, you know, you see both of these as strong zones because, you know, previous support here, previous support here, support all along here, resistance in this area, resistance in this area. So whenever zones encompass both previous support and resistance, and that they're in alignment in the same price zone, that sort of makes that zone that much more impactful for future trading price points. So we should see a decent hold or bounce from this area where we are right now based on that 1359 strength. You know, as we start to, you know, or if we start to see some bumping up, you know, I would look for maybe some resistance to get hit around 1421, or if it blows past 1421 and you're looking for an entry point, maybe as it goes past and then starts to come back down to it, you want to start to average yourself in as it approaches that 1421, assuming that there will be a bounce there. And then of course, set your um, stop losses and your sort of risk uh, tolerance, you know, set those things accordingly if it doesn't hold that price and starts to free fall for some reason. Uh, but these are the areas that I would look for on the upside. This one's probably down a bit more around here. I think is probably more conservative way to go. Um, you know, and then we're going to kind of be a bit in no man's land um, as we get above these price points, at least in recent history. If we want to zoom out and get some additional price points based on previous times when there was higher price activity, um, you know, certainly up here would be a good place to be looking, the mid-17s, and then prices into the mid to high 18s. And then ultimately, you know, there should be another really strong zone here where there was a lot of support and resistance in this zone previously, right there at about 30. So there's going to be a bunch of additional price points in the interim, but, you know, we can definitely get more sort of calculated um, or surgical about those price points as we get nearer to them. Uh, still quite far away to sort of see exactly how the price is acting or reacting in order to be too uh, predictive in those price points at the moment. But, you know, here on the five day, um, these look really strong to me. Big green candle coming in right now. Again, this is about uh, 318 p.m. So, Things are looking pretty solid here. Um, there is also sort of a bottom support trend line that's formed here. And we are going to get into the short data. If you just hold tight, we're going to pop over there in just a moment as we finish up with the charting. Um, but this trend line, I'll look for this to continue to hold also. And, uh, you know, that should offer some additional catch support. Beyond that, if we want to get a scoop from the indicators. The MAs here, um, you know, some bearish cross over there in the 20 crossing below the, the 50, but um, 
you know, they're both still above the 200, so still in a bullish formation. You see that bounce right there off of the 200. So here's another thing that you want to be looking at when you're looking for dip buy opportunities in these stocks that are going kind of parabolic or semi-parabolic, if that's even a thing, um, or intermittently parabolic. You know, and you're looking for a dip to get in or to average yourself in some direction, you know, see if it's bouncing consistently off of any of the MAs. That might give you sort of a, a standpoint from which to to try to grab an entry like here you saw it but you know then it kind of struggled down below it um, and is kind of regaining back over now so there are definitely wild times with these stocks as sort of retail is trying to claw back some of what uh, shorts have done to them uh, I guess in the past what decades probably but uh, we'll see what happens on the short data side of things, this is just a recap from the last video because this hasn't changed yet. Um, this data was provided on 514. Uh, well, it was probably provided after 514, but it was the data up until 514. Um, still showing, you know, just shy of 42% of the float being shorted. I'm hoping, you know, we're getting updated numbers very, very soon. We should get the 531 data um, any day now. So we'll see what impact that shows. Um, you know, on this side of things, we see, and again, this is uh, just sort of like recap stuff because this is from, from a couple weeks ago, but, uh, you know, big increase from reporting date to reporting date. Um, you know, the dollar volume has dropped down, but that's predominantly because the price has gotten crushed so much. And um, that's what's dragging that down. But you see here, big decreases here, but then as soon as I believe this is when Workhorse didn't gain that um, USPS bid or whatever it was, the government bid um, for contracts for vehicles, that's when short sellers jumped in and just have continued to take on more and more short positions throughout this time period. So definitely piling in. Um, oops. Wrong one. If we look at the fee, this is still where I'm a little bit like wish that we could get some movement here. Um, I was going to scroll up and show sort of like how this, you know, can run up as we see here, but you know, you can see it from where we are. Um, but it can run up, you know, and it has in the past up, up over 100%. That would be an amazing thing to have happen these days. Um, but it's just not happening. And we can actually get, I think, some new or more up-to-date data here. See if there's any movement in the shares. It's not updating at the moment for whatever reason. Maybe the fee from Interactive Brokers is not working at the moment, but this should get updated at some point. Show us if there was a bunch of availability movement during the day. And again, just keep in mind when the availability um, goes from something like 150k to 35k, that means that a bunch of short sellers have borrowed more shares to take more positions. So this would show short sellers still coming in to short sell this stock in large numbers. Uh, you know, if we look here to see sort of what was going on last week, let's start here with the um, short volume ratio. So ratio still picking up steam, 31.77 by the end of the day Friday, um, even with big volume, you know, um, that still continued to increase. And so 31.77, highest number uh, in this column. And so while the price is trying to get pushed up, and I know there, there were some pullbacks um, since it's been trying to climb, but short sellers continuing to pile in and try to drag this thing back down, trying to borrow more expensive shares so that they give themselves a better opportunity to cover them at lower cost shares. This one will be interesting. We might come back to this 155 um, total volume, uh, you know, 50 million uh, short volume. Uh, we may come back to that, if not in this video, in another one, but let's see where we get to. Fails to deliver um, doesn't necessarily show me anything the last couple of days, uh, reporting days, but this is really interesting to me. These are big numbers, uh, relatively speaking. You know, three days in a row, over half, uh, well, over 500,000 uh, failed to deliver. Um, and that was, you know, mid May ish. Um, and if we look back to mid May here, that's when there was still a big bump up coming in. And so, 
you know, these are one of the things that you're going to look for to start to see if there may be some naked short selling coming into play here. I wouldn't necessarily say that we have anything coming close to a smoking gun in this case, but things can get really out of control if and when that starts to happen. So we'll keep looking for signs and, and sort of symptoms of that um, as the days and weeks play out if Workhorse can keep the price strength going. You know, we do see the, uh, sorry for the video ad down here playing, uh, but um, we do see that the uh, the total uh, short shares floated is 112 million uh, here. And, you know, the same idea on this one, uh, short ratio three, short float per, uh, percent, 42%. So pretty similar um, to what we saw on the other side of things. Um, here, this the interesting thing here is, you know, 45, almost 46% of the shares of workhorse are held by institutions. So there should be a lot of institutional pressure pushing back against the extensive short selling that's that's going on. Um, because obviously, if they're holding big numbers on their balance sheet um, and wanting this stock price to yield them growth and um, and profits, then the short sellers are working clearly in contradiction to that. So that's where I'm seeing workhorse for now. And to just sort of like be more explicit, more clear on that, I think that what workhorse needs at the moment is basically to keep the price moving up. It's going to need that to put the pressure on the shorts, mostly because um, the shorts are still coming in. Um, you know, they're, they're showing more strength by piling in, it seems to me. And that fee, even though there's almost no shares available to borrow at this point, or a very, very limited quantity, for whatever reason, that fee to borrow is not budging at all, still in the low single digits. So the pressure for the shorts at this point is going to be for that price to keep skyrocketing and be just, you know, show day after day after day, strength, 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 green, green, green. And that will sort of put the pressure on them with the losses that they would be incurring to potentially close out their positions um, in some sort of fashion that sets off a squeeze. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is, you know, with the availability being so low, that's another thing that sort of like should raise your eyebrows and say we should be really on the lookout for naked shorts coming in, um, you know, if the availability is so low. One thing that we sort of like have challenges with just in terms of like reporting is this is reported on a 15 minute increment, though this feed is clearly broken at the moment. But so this is from today that you know, interactive brokers as of 930 this morning only had 20,000 shares available to borrow. Um, and so because that's coming in today, but then something like the data that we're looking at over here with, you know, the fails to deliver, you know, this is such delayed data that, um, you know, this stretches back to May 14th. So unfortunately, we, we don't have those two specifically lining up at the moment. Feel free to leave a comment below if you know a place that provides sort of more up-to-date fails to deliver um, data. I tried to look for some, didn't have any luck, um, you know, quickly. But uh, the only other thing that I found was here in Y charts, which was basically um, the shares outstanding, which I can make the screen a little bit smaller here so you can see what I'm looking at in full view. Um, you know, and the shares outstanding definitely coming down, but still 123 million shares outstanding. So it's not, you know, getting to be a very, very, very low number, which we've seen previously in like GameStop, for example. That can be another indication that there is um, potentially neg naked shorts out there um, that would be really sort of primed for taking advantage of from a uh, inducing a much more catastrophic squeeze. Um, good for the bulls, catastrophic for the short sellers. So that's where things are at the moment, in my opinion. Again, most important thing to me at the moment, be on the lookout for symptoms of naked shorting, but also the price needs to keep gaining, not just holding, because the fee is not high enough to make holding ground on the price that impactful. All right. Well, thanks a bunch for watching. I hope you had a good start to your week and good luck if you're in workhorse. I'd be interested to know what folks are thinking down below. I know that there's wild, strong, and varying opinions on these things, so feel free to share them. And I will see you all 
in the next video.